to the evening news. I am Hadiza Bala. The Nigerian Meteorological Agency has advised governments, emergency managers, and relevant bodies to make use of weather forecasts for effective planning. The NIME Director of Applied Meteorological Services, Mrs. Glory Onyeguli, gave the advice at a National Emergency Coordination Forum organized by the National Emergency Management Agency in Abuja. Mrs. Onyeguli said that, said that NIME has issued seasonal climate predictions for the entire country in fulfillment of its mandate. According to her, the agency made stakeholders, particularly emergency managers, to know what Nigeria climate would look like in 2024 in terms of rainfall and other climatic factors. The director noted that the current heavy flooding in Borno is evidence of climate change advising emergency managers to always act fast, adding that those responsibility for dams should protect the integrity of the facilities. The federal government has announced plans for immediate commencement of upgrading the Alaog Dam in Maiduguri, Borno State. The Minister of Water Resources and Sanitation, Professor Joseph Utsev, made the announcement during his visit to Maiduguri alongside the Minister of State, Bello, noting that the movie is aimed at tackling the persistent challenges posed by the dam's overflow and making a permanent solution to the recurring flood disasters in the region. Professor Otsev, however, assured that a team of experts from the ministry is already on site in Borno State, conducting a comprehensive evaluation of the allowed dam to assess its current condition and recommend swift action to enhance its capacity. He further assured the public that alongside the dam upgrade, coordinated efforts will be made to curb the spread of waterborne diseases in collaboration with the state government. The Corps Marshal of the Federal Road Safety Corps, Malam Sheo Mohammed, has warned Nigerians against embarking on night trips, describing such travels as unsafe and utterly dangerous. The Corps Marshal gave the warning in a statement by the Corps Public Education Officer, Mr. Olusegun Ogunbemide, in Abuja. Malam Mohammed warned fleet operators, commercial drivers, and patronizers of night trips, including private vehicles owners, to desist henceforth from it. The FRAC boss, who spoke extensively on why night trips should be avoided, stressed that the warning arose from the dangers, risks, and arising cases of fatalities occasioned by road traffic crashes recorded at night. He noted that although the FRAC cannot legally ban night trips, but the agency strongly advised those who engage in this practice to realize their choices and schedule their journeys during the day. The United Nations Children's Fund said it has entered into a partnership with journalists, government officials, and other relevant stakeholders to end open defecation and eliminate neglected tropical diseases in Nigeria. Speaking at a two-day media dialogue on ending open defecation in Nigeria and eliminating neglected tropical diseases held in Lagos State, PSS Chief of Water, Sanitation, and Hygiene, Jen Bevan, emphasized that the partnership is essential to bring the campaign to every corner of this country while highlighting the danger associated with open defecation. We have noted that NTDS, which are caused by bacteria infections, should not be overlooked, stressing that proper defecation practices could help prevent such diseases. She noted that media plays a huge role in publicizing this accurately, adding that the campaign in India was successful because people heard about open defecation everywhere in the media, schools, and hospitals. Mrs. Bevan, however, noted that to achieve the same impact in Nigeria, there is need to put in people's mind that defecation should only occur in toilets. Preparedness of the, teacher, of the Teaching Service Commission in Oshun State and the entire teachers for the 2024-2025 academic session, as well as the updates on the teachers' recruitment Exercise as its effects, the commission will be discussed tomorrow on the Molaya program. Tescom chairman Mr. Timitokwe Mustafa is the guest on the program which promotes the activities of the present administration in the state of OSBC channels. Listeners and viewers will have the opportunity to contribute down in the studio line when the program is on live. This year's annual family camp meeting of the Ocean Conference of the Seventh-day Adventist Church, which started last Sunday, will climax tomorrow with a special Sabbath worship. A statement by the camp's organizing committee explains that the guest preacher on the theme, To 
chosen for mission I will go is Pastor Kingsley Anonoba of Babcock University. Guest speakers at the conference are Pastor Theodore Dixon of Babcock and Pastor Uchawa Josia of Adelike University, Ede. The host is Pastor Adegbenga Adebomi, while the chief host is Pastor Atolagbe Adeleye, President Western University in Nigerian Union of the Seventh-day Adventist Union of the Seventh-day Adventist Church, Maryland, Lagos. The statement implores prompt attendance of the special Sabbath worship by the, cham by the campus and others. Final burial for Madame Miriam Oyeron Keolani of Ad of Agidioko compound Ejibo, who died January this year at age of 94, commences today. A statement by one of her children, Olaumi Olani of OSBC, indicates that Mama Miriam Olani bought the left in the Ocean Teaching Hospital Shogbo this morning to her husband's house in Ejibo, while lying at her residence at Agidioko's compound beside Idiakwe Baptist Church, Ejibo. Christian Bake would follow at Idiapu Baptist Church Ejibo this evening. According to the statement, the Thanksgiving service holds tomorrow at Idiapu Baptist Church Ejibo in the morning, while interment follows immediately after church service at Mama Residence. Reception holds at Unity High School Playing Ground in Isha Road, Ejibo. She survived, she survived by children, grandchildren, and great grandchildren. And now to sports. The Japanese under 20 women's national team defeated Nigeria 2 1 in the quarterfinal of the 2024 FIFA under 20 women's World Cup in Bogota, Colombia. The match, which was played at the Estadio Metropolitano de Teco Stadium, saw the Japanese being a better side with their quick exchange of passes to penetrate the Nigerian's defense. Both sides started strongly in the first 30 minutes, after which Miyu. Matsunaga scored the first goal for Japan in the 33rd minute to end the first half with 1-0 advantage to the Asians. With so much expectation in the second half, the Falconets couldn't break the Japanese defense before they conceded the second goal in the 65th minute when Maya Hichikata slotted in the ball in Nigeria net. However, Olushola Shobuwale struck a late goal before restoring hopes in Nigeria with her efforts in the 91st minute, just three minutes after she coming into the game. As a result, the 2010 and 2014 finalists have crashed out of the 2024 FIFA Under-20 Women's World Cup in the quarterfinals as they fell 1-2 to the far power of Japan. And at the foreign scene, China is set to raise its statutory retirement age as the country faces a looming demographic crisis and an aging population. A decision by Beijing officials says the statutory retirement age for male workers will be gradually extended from the original 60 years to 63 years, while for women workers the retirement age will be extended from the original 55 years to 58 years, respectively, depending on the type of job. The retirement age will gradually begin to rise over 15 years from 2025. The officials also said from 2030, the minimum year of basic pension contributions required to receive monthly benefits will be gradually raised from 15 years to 20 years at the pace of an increase of six months annually. It's added that the new rules would allow Chinese people to postpone retirement to an even later date if they reach an agreement with employers. And that ends the evening news on OSBC TV. Join us at 7 